Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the Midas version 3.1 and that can be used for monocular depth estimation. So basically just going to have a live webcam. We're going to see how we can download different models, play around with that. So they have released their version 3.1. I already have videos about their 2.0 and also their 3.1. So definitely go check those out. I create some custom Python scripts where we can actually like load in the model, run it on a live webcam. We're also going to do that in this video here, but this is with version 3.1. So we're going to see the results. This is actually like pretty crazy. They have some really nice models now. We're going to see how we can set it up and run it directly from their repository. So let's just jump straight into the Midas GitHub repository. Here we can see all the code files. So first of all, here we can see some results, improvements versus frames per seconds, both for the version 2, 2.1, 3.0, and also the 3.1 now, where they're more splitting over to transformer-based architectures for doing depth estimation. We see all the versions 3.1 here, they're significantly better than the 3.0 and also the version 2. This is actually like a pretty, uh, pretty large improvement in depth estimation, but we can also see that it comes with a cost. Some of these models here, like the BIT model, like especially like the large models on relatively large images, they only run like 10 frames per second on an RTX 3090. We won't get real time inference with this, but we actually like get some really nice depth estimation with high detail. So we can maybe use it if we don't need like a real time application. If we need real-time applications, we will definitely need to go over and take a look at some of the other architectures here. We also have the small model and also the LEVIT model, which can actually like run on its devices. Here I'm going to show you how we can download the models, use all the different types of models with this GitHub repository in our own custom code. In another video, we're going to see how we can actually like extract all of the information ourselves and create our own project around it. Here, we're just going to use their run and demo script directly. So if we just scroll a bit down in the GitHub repository, we can actually like see a comparison of all the different types of model they have. So we have this 3.1 BEIT that we're going to see in just a second. I'm going to run it with around three frames per second. This is the image that we're going to pass through. But again, remember that this will be relative depth. You can really like, you will have to have some references and act like project it out into like absolute distances, have some references and do some estimation where this is only like relative. But we see some really nice details. This can be used in a lot of cool applications with like generative AI. It is really useful. You can also create point clouds around it. We can see that this version 3.1 here is significantly better than version three. Uh, we can just see the nice details here around like, especially like around the table. Um, also the optics in the background, we can see the chairs are a bit like blurred out here and it is really nice detail here, but the details we get on these new models, it is just awesome. We're going to see how we can run it in our own custom Python script. So if you want to take your machine learning, AI and computer vision skills to the next level, I also have my courses on the website. You can go check them out. We have everything from optic detection with deployment, optic tracking with Yolo V8. We also have transformers and segmentation courses. The most interesting one, for me, it's definitely like this research paper implementation course where we learn how to actually like implement research paper architecture. So we're going to have the architecture on one side, we're going to have code on the other side. So let's just jump straight into cursor. This is my new code editor that I'm going to use. It is basically just Visual Studio Code, but with like Copilot integrated into it. So we can basically just take like, for example, this text here, control L and then we'll add it over here to the right in our chat and we can ask its questions. What does this code do? And then we can just hit enter. We will have our copilot directly in our um, it code editor here as well. It runs really nice. You can even like upload documentation to it, links and so on. You can specify what files it should actually like take into account. But this is really cool. This is just to show you guys. But now we're going to jump into cursor and set up our um, project. So I've basically just cloned the GitHub repository. So the GitHub repository that we just saw, I've cloned that. We have this Midas. And then we can also see where we have all the black base models, our blocks, DPT model, Midas net, custom net, and so on. We can see all the files that we need. This is the run file that we're going to use. I have opened that up here. So I got some errors when I was just running it directly from the GitHub repository. So if you guys get the same errors, just make sure that you actually do these steps. So the first one was actually to go in here into the BIT model. So when I'm actually trying to read in some stuff, um, I was getting some errors and that is because it was just called like drop path here and we need to have drop path one. So again, it might not be your situation, but like if you're following through and trying out this and you can't figure it out, I could like spend some time actually figuring out like why this didn't really work. The second one here, which is probably like pretty significant is that we want to choose this uh, Boolean and set that equal to false instead of like true. So that can also help in some of your errors. But now let's go in and download some models. If we go into the GitHub repository again, we can now go in and download all the models. If we go over into the release, we have five tags. 
So now we can see we have these versions. Let's go in and take a look at version 3.1. Again, I have all the other versions covered in other videos, so definitely go check those out. They, those are also some pretty nice ones, and we're having some different test cases um, and so on on the live webcam. Now we can see all these models here. We should definitely go for like the base models. Again, large models will just be like significantly larger, as we can see. So we can see here like the large model is 1.3 gigs, where here we have like 500 megabytes for the base model. But let's take this uh, DPT BIT base model take that one then we can basically just uh, press it and it will download to our computer we can then extract it and drag it into our weight file and we can also take this swin to base model let's basically just go for those if we then go into our code editor again we should just take our weights that we have downloaded put it into this weight folder and then we can just directly use it when we're going to call this run python script so now we're going to take a look at it we have all our weights over here to the left we have our run we have corrected our errors so now we should be good to go so first of all here, we're just importing all the dependencies. We have this process function, which takes in our device. So if we want to use the, the GPU or the CPU, we need to specify the model, the model type, image, input size, target size, optimize, and also if you want to use a camera or um, a video, you can, you can see all the specified arguments here as well. We can also use OpenWindow. We're not going to do that in this example here. It will speed up your pro program. It will speed up your model if you actually have Intel hardware on your computer and you have downloaded the open window version of the model but now let's just go down we take our image here convert it to a tensor with PyTorch. then we're going to have our sample if we want to optimize it and use our CUDA GPU we're basically first of all we're just going to optimize our model use use half position for our image then if the execution here and we don't want to use the camera we just go in and extract the height and the width of our um, of our sample and then we basically just do a forward pass. We have our model dot forward. So we do a forward pass of our sample. We will get the prediction out and our prediction here would act like be our depth map. Then we can do some interpolation here with our target size. So that could act like be our, our target size. So that is what we actually want to interpolate or like upscale our image to again. So first of all here, we need to act like have our sample. We need to downsample it as we can see it, we do here. So we resize it. After we resize it, pass it through the model, then we need to upsample again and do interpolation with our values. So we get back to our original resolution. So that is what we're doing here. We're squeezing it. We're putting it on the CPU again so we can do our operations and then we convert it to NumPy. Then the prediction here will basically be our depth map and we can do that. We can display it. We can visualize it. We can save it. We can use it for whatever we want to use our depth map for. Then we have our run function input path if we want to specify like an image or a video we can also have the output path model path model type if you want to optimize it if you want to like cite here so this is not too important the most important ones are the model path and also the model type so it, again it is using this as default but we can just specify that as an argument to our um, to our python script when we're going to run it we use cuda if it's available again we load our model we return our model and also transform so first of all we need to like pre pre-process our image or like transform our image based on the model type that we're using so some of the models are taking in different like image dimensions uh, and so on and also does some different pre-processing steps if we have an input patch we're basically just going to load in all the images with glob or else if we're not using like images that we want to use like a live webcam it can also do that automatically so here if our input path is not none that is basically just like if you go want to go in and act like just process our image so we have loaded in our images now we want to have our images processed we have our numerate we have a for loop running through all our images we take the index and also the image name and then we basically just process our image. We get a prediction out. So when, first of all, we need to call torch.nograd because we're running inference. We don't want to calculate the gradients while doing the forward pass. We specify all the parameters for our process, process method. We get our predictions out. And then here we basically just like write out our depth to our, uh, to our file. We can also visualize it and so on. We can write it out with OpenCV, but we can also just call like imshow. We're going to do in the else statement here, we're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to open up a video stream. So here we can open up a video stream. We specify the index of our video stream. So this will be OpenCV, so our video capture. And then as long as we're just running inside this while loop, as long as we're not like uh, escaping or like we're not pressing escape on our keyboard and terminating the program, we will run inside of this while loop. But now we have covered all of that, which is in this run Python script, we have these uh, parser arguments that we can go through. 
So first of all, the input path, the output path, the model weights, and the model type. We already covered that. Here we see all the different types that we can that we can specify. So these are the models that I showed you in the GitHub repository as well, where just if you go inside the releases, you can press whatever model that you want to to download and then you just need to specify it here and put it in the weights folder. If you don't specify anything else, it will open up your webcam or else you will have to specify an input path to your image or folder. So we can also go down here and use the Ku DNN as, um, as the backend if that is available on your computer. Um, if you have like, like installed Ku DNN, but again, then we're going to just going to run this um, run function, which will do all the processing for us. So now we're going to up and open a new terminal and basically just see how we can set it up. I'm just going to open up a command prompt. There we go. I need to cd into Midas because this is the directory that I have cloned. So first of all here, we're going to run this Python script. So Python run. And now we need to specify all our parameters. So let's just open up our file structure again. We don't need to specify an input because we're just going to use the webcam. First of all, we need to specify our model weights. So let's just go in and take this uh, dbt uh, base model. So First of all, I'm just going to copy the path. So we're just going to copy like the whole path. So this will be the model weights. Now we need to go into our run. We need to specify our model type. Oops. There we go. We need to specify our model type. And our model type will be equal to our uh, DPT. Uh, what is it? it was the base model. There we go. And now we should actually like be able to run it. We can just see the side. We don't need to set that. We can also set optimize here, but that is true as default. Oh, we can actually see here set as default equal to false square. We don't really care about that too much. So now we should actually like be able to run it and see it open up our webcam. So let's now just run the program here. I've grabbed the webcam. I'll also turn on the light so we get some better uh, results. We're starting the processing. Here we can see the depth map that we're just printing out as well. So now we can see that we're open up this video capture. Again, we can see some pretty nice results. I'm just going to like walk around and see some different examples. So again, we can see that this is actually like a fairly nice depth map. Let's take some more examples. So yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Let's try one of the other models here as well. So we can try to see and compare them. Here we got around like 11 frames per second. We can also try with the, the, with the larger model. So we have the base here and then we also have the larger one. So now we're going to run this next model. This is the DPT BEIT large model. And before we were running the base model, now we can see that the inference speed is significantly slower. It is around like three frames per second, but we should also be able to see a significant upgrade in the details and also the quality. Again, let's just try to move it around and see some of the results. Just initially here, like it looks, it looks kind of better here, but again, we also run uh, only like three frames per second. Let's try to see some more examples. Mm -hmm. So we can already see like this is like significantly better results. So those were some pretty awesome results. I hope you have enjoyed this video. We're going to create some videos where we're going to use this in our own projects and applications, basically just trying to clean up the code and try to create our own class where we can load in the model, do a forward pass, get our depth map out, and then we can just specify um, the, whatever model that we want to use directly in our code instead of running it from the command line. So definitely stay tuned for that. I hope you have joined this video and also that you learned a ton. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.